watch this video completely because in the end i have got something interesting for you that is going to help you with your csi and net preparation so with that let's begin today's video hello everyone and welcome back to now i know if you guys remember a couple of videos back we were talking about study plan and strategic uh, schedule that you can follow for csi and net preparation your own customized schedule Following that video, I received a lot of comments and messages asking me that some of you are struggling with the time management, some of you are ready with the timetable, but you are not able to implement it correctly. So here I have listed down some of the tips that I follow for my own self and I think this will help you. The first tip that I want to give here is to have a realistic timetable, a realistic plan. The mistake that most of us do is when we think of a schedule, when we think of a timetable, we think something very complicated, something that has something that is very rigid and it's not flexible. That's where we do the mistake, right? So have a realistic timetable or have a realistic plan. Not only that it shouldn't be so rigid, but also you need to acknowledge and include your distraction in your plan because let's let's face it you know in in today's day and age we are all surrounded by technology and all sorts of distraction it is not possible that you can just completely avoid that you are not going on social media you are not touching your phone that for the whole day that's not gonna help maybe one day two days somehow you're managing it but it's not sustainable it's not realistic so it is important that you include all those distraction and when i say include means you acknowledge that you do need time for that also okay so we are going to have a realistic timetable we are going to make sure that everything is included that on average day you might be doing also you need to have this mindset that you can do it believe that you can do it don't think timetable or a schedule as some really uh, tough thing to follow it ha it is it is not that difficult if a person like me can do it i am trust me you can do it too okay so have that mindset believe in yourself that you can do it the second thing that you need to make sure is your timetable you are writing it down it should be either on paper if you're someone who is comfortable to write it down if you have a planner if you have a diary otherwise a simple notebook is good enough or if you're comfortable digitally you can just use a google calendar so make sure that you are writing it down and how you are going to go about it how you can write it down what and all to be included i'll just tell you in a moment but make sure that it is not in your head it has to be it has to be materialized it should be either on the paper or it should be digitally ready so use a schedule a proper schedule which is actually you can see and you can follow if possible as i always say write it down on paper and paste it at your desk on your wall wherever you can see it constantly that way you know what you are what is scheduled for the whole day so now comes the actual planning okay and for that there is an effective method called time blocking that means essentially in simple terms you are blocking time for certain activities okay now how you can use this is if you have a pen and paper that would be great just pause this video and do as i'm saying because that way it will work the best okay so how you are going to use this time blocking method is you are going to do two things over here number one you will put the things that are not flexible what does that mean let's say for example your online or offline classes the time for your classes is fixed that you cannot change right let's say for example you have first session in 10 to 12 in the morning and then second after lunch 1 to 3 pm in the afternoon so these are the timings you cannot change so the first thing is you are going to write down the things that are not flexible the second items that you will include in your timetable now are the things that are flexible that includes your study time your resting time your workout time maybe you're going to gym you have to do some other works time for friends and family and very important for you time for your distractions maybe you want to go to social media facebook instagram youtube you're using netflix whatever it is for your distraction also so all these things that are flexible you need to include those 
Now, how you are going to divide the time for this? The first important thing is, of course, your study time. Let's say, for example, your aim is to study six hours in a day. Okay, my recommendation would be break the six hours into two hours slot. So maybe two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two hours in the evening. Completely depending on how many hours you want to study. If you cannot sit for two hours at a stretch, maybe you can have one hour slot, a small 10-15 uh, minutes break, and then have one more hour slot. But I would recommend after two hours, take at least 20 to 30 minutes break because after two hours, the concentration generally would go down. So schedule your two to hour slot in the morning, afternoon, evening. Divide it. Next would be your time for friends and family, your time for workout, time for having food, time for having rest. Now here, if possible, I'll insert a slide showing you how I have distributed the time. Let's say for example, this is how my day goes. My non-flexible uh, items are my classes, that is 10 to 12 and 1 to 3. So maybe I'll get up 6 a.m. in the morning, and 6.30 to 8.30, 6 to 6.30 will be time to fresh up, have tea, coffee. 6.30 to 8.30 my, will be my first study hour, two hours study hour time. And you have to be very mindful over here. We have seen in the last uh, CSIR net strategy video that you need to decide what you're going to study on which day. We have learned how to do that. If not, to learn that strategy, to understand that strategy, look at that video, have a look, that will really help. So now you know what you're going to study in the first two hours. Maybe I'm going to study immunology and I even know chapter that I'm going to study. Then 8.30 to 9.30 or 9.45 will be the time for me to for my workout, to have breakfast, to have bath, get ready and be prepared for the online classes. Now if you are taking online class, please have bath and get ready because don't be in your pajama, don't be lazy, don't not take bath. Be ready as if like you have to go to college. So that will help you and that will make you feel good. So do that. And then just revise, go through what you have studied the uh, day before. And 10 to 12, you will have your regular classes. 12 to 1 is your lunch break. So you have lunch, you relax. Then 1 to 3 p.m. will be second round of classes. Now, once you are done with your classes, because you have been studying from, from morning, let's say for example, now you're tired and you need to take some rest. So three to four or 4.30 will be the time that you take rest, uh, sleep for some time, take a nap, get up, have tea and be prepared and ready for your second round of study. 4.30 to 6.30 will be my second two hour study st session. And here also I know what I'm going to study. Let's say for example, I'm going to study cell biology. After that, a small break is needed, half an hour break, maybe 6.30 to 7. That could be a time that I'm going to spend with my friends. And then 7 to 9 will be my third and the last study session for the day. Here, maybe I'm going to study biochemistry. I'm going to study some metabolism. I know what I'm going to study. And then 9 to 10, you have your dinner, you have time with your family. And again, uh, 10 to 10.30 or 11 is your uh, distraction time where you include your social media, Netflix and so on. So this was just an example. You don't have to follow it this way. Just an example to understand how you can use this time blocking method. Essentially, put your uh, non-flexible items first and then go with flexible item. Give preference to your study first. Should be your study then go uh, you know next important thing next important thing next important thing that's all that's how you distribute all the task for the day and this you are going to do it day before my advice will be to make it day before because in the morning if you have to do this you are going to spend half an hour 45 minutes in the morning just doing this so it is better that you finish it day before in the evening and as you go on this might take time uh, for maybe one week 10 days then it becomes kind of automatic that you know what and how it works for you and it will be easy for you the next step would be to review and revise your timetable on a daily basis at least in the beginning time because that will help a lot for example it is possible that you're not able to achieve everything in the first few days and which is completely all right okay that that happens it is possible that you are able to achieve 50 percent or 60 percent in the beginning or maybe you are not able to understand certain things that are not 
sitting properly in your timetable understand what is not working and try to find out why it is not working so that you can change it the next day and improve it as you go on so what i believe is rather than trying to have a 90% 100% every day and burning out after 7 days or 10 days it's it's all right to achieve 50% 60% constantly and as you go on try to improve bit by bit you know being consistent for a longer period of time is more sustainable and is more realistic than just being excited for few days and achieving trying to achieving 90 or 100% so that would be the way to go about it at least according to me the next step is something that i have been following recently and that is to have an accountability partner now what is an accountability partner An accountability partner is someone with whom you are going to discuss what you are going to do, what you are going to do for that particular day, and at the end of a day, you discuss whether you have achieved that or not. For example, I have been taking one online class, uh, a course recently, and I have a friend who is my accountability partner. What we both do is early in the morning, we first discuss with each other what are our tasks for the day. I tell her what am I going to do, and she tells me what she is going to do. So now we know that we are supposed to do this and someone else is also knowing that I'm supposed to do that. So that having an accountability for each other helps. And at the end of a day also we discuss, did you finish your task or not? She'll ask me, did I finish my task or not? If not, what went wrong? Why couldn't we do it? And what can we do to improve it the next day? Now it can be your friend, it can be your sibling, it can be someone in the family who can be your accountability partner. and trust me this approach helps a lot it really motivates you it inspires you because it's now you have talked to someone now someone else knows you are supposed to do that that somehow helps a lot and the last and the most important thing that i want to tell you is don't be too hard on yourself it is it is very human and it is very possible that you are not able to stick to completely everything every single day which is perfectly all right try to achieve from your standpoint as much as you can and if something is not working out make sure you try to identify it and improve it the next day but don't be so rigid with your timetable don't make it 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 should the timetable or the scheduling or time managing is to make you feel comfortable and happy about your day it should not become burdensome it should not become too rigid so don't be too hard on yourself it's okay if you start out slowly and steadily you will improve so have your smart goals ready goals that are realistic achievable time bound and specific you know what you're supposed to do in what time you're supposed to do and how you will do it it shouldn't be like i'm thinking oh, tomorrow i'll finish one complete unit and that unit i haven't studied before that is not realistic it's not going to happen right Now, if you're appearing for CSIR Net in the November, that means we are in the last phase, the revision phase, and I have told you in the last video of CSIR Net that you need to practice a lot of mock tests because that's the best way to revise what you have studied. For this particular thing, An Academy has come up with an interesting thing. They have come up with a series called An Academy Premier League, where they are conducting live mock tests. for all the subjects of csir net because you are on now i know most likely you are from life science background for you guys a live test is happening tomorrow that is 17th october saturday 10 am in the morning and if you want to appear for a general aptitude test that is happening tomorrow saturday 17th october 11:30 in the morning and all of this is for free so you can enroll for free and appear for the test not only that you can appear for the test they will select the top 15 rankers from each subject because not only life science they have other subjects test also happening so they are going to select top 15 rankers from each subject and they will stand a chance to win exciting prizes so the link for this particular exam the test series will be provided in the description box you just click on the link you will be taken on a page where you can appear for the live test and all of this is for free a great way to have a feel how in exam you are going to write so that's the best way you can go about having a live mock test once again it is happening tomorrow for life science 
10 a.m. in the morning. That is 17th October, Saturday, 10 a.m. And if you want to appear for general aptitude test, that is happening tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. in the morning. Link will be in description box. Just follow it and it is pretty much self-explanatory. So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful uh, and you will be able to make an effective timetable that you can implement it. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep learning.